So I have some older 3D printers that don't have integrated cameras for time lapses or for monitoring your prints, and I thought it would be nice to have a camera on some of these printers. So I was looking around on Amazon, and I came across this Minchin Beagle camera. Now I don't know too much about it, but it seems like it will do the job. Pretty plug and play, and um, we'll do time lapses and print monitoring through an app. So I thought I'd take you along with me as I set it up and we try it out. Okay, so I've started the first print with the Beagle camera and it appears to be working. So you put the SD card in the camera and then it adds its own little bit of G-code to pull the camera out of shot, or the head out of shot when it's uh, taking its time lapse. And I can see everything it's doing on my phone, which is kind of nice. So. We'll see how it comes out. I'll check back in a little bit. Okay, so the first print finished up right here on the time lapse. It's got a few stringing issues, but some of that is caused by the time lapse itself. And this wood filament does tend to string a little bit more than some other ones. Okay, future Jason here. So don't do what I did on this first time lapse. I accidentally changed the um, coding format of the video 
the output to an MJPEG instead of just the H264, just leave it at the H264. It's a much more compatible file type. Otherwise, you're gonna have to find a converter and you can't play the time lapses on your phone. So it's, um, yeah, don't do that. So we got a result and the time lapse worked. It uh, definitely needs some improvement though. I think we can do better. The print itself came out a little bit um, less than desirable as well. You can see wherever it stopped to pull back and take the photo for the time lapse, it left a very stringy blob. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this filament is not the best for stringing either. It's a wood PLA. So I'm going to go ahead and switch the, the filament and try to get a better lighting setup for our next time lapse. So let's go try that. Okay, so that time lapse came out a lot better. I think I'm gonna keep working on it, trying to get a dedicated light setup and an actual stand for the camera to hold it, maybe do some vertical videos for reels. But the result is a hundred times better by, we switched the filament on this. So this is the um, AnyCubic PLA that we've been liking recently. And you can just see here that it is way less stringy than the wood PLA here. And um, on top of that, I did lower the nozzle temperature. I think I dropped it down to 205, and that seemed to help a lot. <clears throat> I also increased the retraction by just a little bit. These are all suggestions that were on the Minchin website to um, improve the results of stringing caused by the time lapse. So um, that, that definitely fixed it for for printing that crystal set there. So um, there's definitely a few things that I would like to see improved if they're gonna like keep working on this camera. The main thing that bothered me was trying to get this little SD card out of the slot. Like I don't have very big fingers and I cannot get that out without using some sort of tool, screwdriver or something to poke poke that and release it. So it, it really just doesn't need to sit in there as deep or the the casing should be cut out a little bit more here so you can get your fingers in there. So every time that I want to pull that out, I'm gonna have to use a tool or move the camera around to get it out, which is not conducive to getting consistent results with a camera. <coughs> but with that said, I do really like the camera. It is plug and play. It got a time lapse without any extra coding on the first try. Granted, it needed a little bit of work after the fact to get a better result, but that's that's all understandable. That's fine. But um, if if they fix this memory card issue, that would that would solve a lot of things for me. So um, would I recommend buying it? You know, if you're looking for a relatively affordable camera setup that doesn't require any extra coding or um, trying to piece together parts with like a Raspberry Pi and a Raspberry camera, uh, the little webcam thing. Um, that's actually more expensive right now too, if you look around. So I think this is a good option if all you wanna do is plug in two cables, um, slice your files as normal, put it in the camera and go. There's there's very little else to it. now. The camera is, it says it's an HD camera. I think it does up to 1080p, so not extremely high resolution. You're not gonna get 4K, um, 4K footage with it, but for the most part, you probably don't need it. So if you're just looking to monitor your prints and get some neat time lapses just for fun or just for sharing on Instagram or YouTube or whatever, I think this is probably a good option for you if, you're, if your printer does not have an integrated camera like some of the newer models. So. 
Anyways, I thank you for watching. If you uh, want to help support this channel, I do have an affiliate link down below for the camera to Amazon, but uh, this video was not sponsored. This was just something I wanted to try out and see if I could monitor my CR10 with it. Um, and then uh, if you're interested in any of our upcoming projects, we've got this new project coming, the next level, which is the successor to the Level Up Kickstarter we did last summer. It's going to have a bunch of fun and functional 3D prints um, for your game room, your office, uh, wherever you want to put them. But they're, uh, they're coming soon. And then uh, all of our files are available on zykit.com. If you uh, feel like picking any of those up, those help support the channel. Those help support more designs being made. So. Thanks for watching everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please give it a like and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And we'll catch you next time.